All right, hey everybody, I'm Dratnos, joined by the CEO of GG Wow Rating, Nerf Tank TV, Dorky, the uh, the vice president of GG Wow Rating, and we have two special guests as well, Andy Brew and Lapan, two of the greatest tanks in Europe and the whole world, even. Thanks for joining us for this uh, <laughs> this roundtable. Thanks for having me. All right, so we've got some uh, some footage that we're going to look at as well. We're, we're going to talk basically about all things tank and strategy, how to play a better tank. It's one of the most intimidating roles, I think, for people to get into tanking keys, right? Is uh, It's scary to to start tanking for your group. Uh, so, Dorky, why don't you, why don't you start off this uh, this VOD and, we, and tell us what we're, what we're what are we looking at here? Yeah, so we're in a Pug 21 DOS. Uh, our comp is looking a little bit scuffed, but I sort of had to route around this a little bit. I mean, by right around it, I mean, I just pull in a straight line. Yes, yeah, so this is a blood decay the, yeah. key, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What sort of considerations do you have to change based on what tank you're playing in a, in a dungeon? I would say, like, one of the biggest things is if you're playing a blood decay, it's definitely really good in pugs. You can never really know if your healer is going to stay alive or, like, able to keep you up. And blood decay is one of those classes that don't really have to worry about that. Also, like, grouping up mobs is, like, really easy with this class because... You don't have to rely on kicks to get mobs in or like maybe someone's gonna rip aggro early but like having all these extra grips and stuff is really useful so like i think one of the biggest things when you're pugging keys or just starting out as a tank is just having a solid route that's like fast but efficient that's how i've always ordered it i think you shouldn't do anything too crazy don't rely on any crazy skips and if you do have to do some skips, like say, skipping to Echelon in the halls, I think it's really important to be asking everyone if they have potions, like invisibility potions especially, before the key starts. How do you feel about Threat? Especially with uh, Fury Warrior in the party. That is true. <laughs> I think Threat is actually an issue a lot of times. In yeah, pubs. that's that's like the biggest issue I have with the uh, Bloody Kiss. It's like, yeah. just aggro, honestly. Especially like on pull, because you have, you have so much setup times, like, because your rune is on a GCD, you need to bone shield, you want to D&D, &D, spread your shit, and then, you know, then you can start doing damage. I don't Dude, know. not just that. There's a lot of setup time compared to other tanks. And it's yeah, in, in pugs especially, because really... I've noticed yeah, in yeah. pugs, people just, like, attack mobs right away. You pull, like, the first two mobs, and you're still trying to group everything up, yeah, and they just start attacking those two mobs like crazy. Yeah. No, that's too many issue all the time I'm pugging. I mean, well, I, I think any, Fury like, is kind that. of... Um... I mean, I don't think there's anything you can really do about that. Um, I mean, the only thing you can really do is, I guess, link a kind of semi-planned out route beforehand, and then maybe, you know, they know that you're going to group something together, and therefore they, like, hold their cooldowns for it. But I feel yeah. like that's generally one of the problems with playing with people that you aren't really communicating with, like, other voice. Yeah, I, th I think it's, it's kind of a Blood Decay only problem, right? Where it's just like, if they um, if they if they use their globals on the first three seconds, you know, there's just nothing not you can do, right? I, I don't I don't think so entirely. I mean, to be honest with you, I've pugged like Fury Warrior, like a lot of times, and it's honestly a horrible spec to pug with, um, <laughs> just because of the yeah. uh, like their damage profile is so bursty. It's very loaded. Boom, like insta aggro, um, and I, I even had problems with that, like playing prop paladin with that. Um, I, I think it's just. I guess a problem of playing with well with pugs, I guess, where you don't communicate stuff as well. And I don't think there's any real way around that. I think the best thing you could do is maybe like if you haven't got a planned out route, you say you say beforehand before you pull something together, you know, like don't do damage yet, you know, until I get everything together or something. Maybe it's one of the most underrated problems in general. This expansion just threat, you know. Yeah, it's definitely really bad. This expansion uh, compared to previous expansions. Uh, I would definitely love if they like buff the threat modifier or something. I, I know they have done stuff like that in the past. Yeah. Um, I think the, in, in general, aggro feels definitely way more rough. I think it's because like D DPS specs are very like cooldown reliant expansion compared to before. Like you do no damage out of cooldowns, like literally tank damage, and then you press your your cooldowns and you're doing infinite damage, right? Yeah. Whereas tanks don't really have that DPS cooldown, you know, ready. And even if they yeah. do, it's not to the same extent as DPS players have, so... 
I, just... I mean, I, I think it's definitely a problem. And the thing is, uh, Blizzard is kind of lucky. Like, uh, I mean, in high keys, I play with a Windwalker, and a lot of his aggro is directed onto his uh, his clones. And then I play with a Subrogue and a Mage. We both have like. Or subworkers tricks and then uh, a mage has like uh was it mirrors as well the threat um i think if there was something else that was like the meta for like m plus then i think aggro would be kind of shown as even more of like a bigger issue especially in higher keys because even sometimes like speed like gets aggro off me in a pool where i'm popping wings divine toll potion and i'm like fully pumping and i don't know he's just doing so much damage that he still gets threat uh, I don't know. I think that's kind of an issue, I guess. Maybe that's also something to do with Windwalker being... Do you guys um, so. adapt your build to be more... Like, is that something that you seriously are thinking about when you're thinking about, like, what soul binds and stuff, what tree you're going to run, all, all those sorts of things? Is it, is it also just, okay, what what is going to do enough damage to hold threat? Or are you purely looking at, at more defensive uh, considerations? Um, I mean, that's something that's really hard, right? I mean... Uh, especially on Fortified as a propeller, I feel like I pretty much have to play Bubble Taunt otherwise, cause otherwise I just run out of cooldowns at some point and that's definitely like a massive DPS loss because usually if you play Righteous Protector you have like wings going into every single pool um, so yeah that definitely kind of sucks I don't know, I mean for the most part you definitely want to go more damage orientated I mean like an example of that would be I guess on Necrotic it's considered better to play Claire because of the potion, but then you lose so much damage by playing Claire over playing uh, Mechanicus. Um, and then also, most people also on Necrotic would like to play uh, Quadra uh, Endurance Conduit so that you don't have to have the auto pot. But then I feel like if you do that, you lose a potency Conduit, and then I don't know, it's, it's gonna be very bad for your threat as well. Uh, there's like no good option really uh sometimes uh definitely yeah actually kind of punishing so what are you guys' thoughts when people ask you as a like a high level tank should i be playing more defensively or like should, let's say they ask you should i be playing a uh, super strain or dancing rune weapon or should i be playing uh i can't think of much like examples like fiery brand or yeah. uh, blind faith instead because you know how like, people always ask that right like, what are you guys' approaches to people asking that? Because, I mean, they're not playing at the same level as everyone else, right? Like, say they're just doing 18 keys or something. I personally feel like they don't necessarily need the offensive or the defensive option because, you know, they're doing a lower key. But at the yeah. same time, I can't really trust these other tanks to be playing some, like, Mongo DPS build that I would normally play in, like, a low key, right? So, like, how, how do you guys approach that if people are asking you about what I should be playing? I think it's, uh, it's a tough question because at the same time, like just because they're not doing the highest level, they might, you know, be learning tank and like the defensive option is going to be beneficial if they're struggling to survive and stuff too. But as you all know, it's especially in pug pugs, it is threat is a huge thing, right? And but it's also having a rune weapon in every pool is going to give you that initial threat. But I've even experienced loss of aggro like mid pull, like halfway through the pull, just losing aggro randomly and. That's where super train really helps and it, it's just like a lot easier to play around i think it's just like a passive thing you have yeah it, it, like well, if you're doing you know progression keys and they happen to be 10 levels lower than than andy's keys it's like you, you're still going to have similar categories of problems right it's not like oh you know damage isn't going to be an issue because it's a low key right threat isn't going to be an issue it's like they're all still issues right it's just slightly different texture right to how how things are going to kill you right it's it's you know you're you're not going to get killed in two autos in the same way i think the the context matters and like what class it kind of depends on the class like uh, blood decay i'd probably recommend super strain just for yeah. threat and damage but like another class like i'd probably recommend maybe more defensive because you know you don't know if you're going into a pug like how how good the healer is or like how well your group is going to uh, get kicks and stops and stuff to where you might just need the defensive power to stay alive in the keys. Yeah, so I but think like, maybe a better example. <clears throat> how about, like, let's say, uh, for Vengeance, like, if, so, if someone's asking me, I think there's a common question, actually, that I get asked a lot. 
they always ask me, like, if I'm playing Vengeance, should I also be playing Spirit Bomb and Blind Faith? Or should I be playing Firebrand build? Like, what would you guys recommend the Demon Hunters out there? Of course, they're doing, like, 20 keys. I mean, the best Demon Hunter at the moment, Rare is playing uh, Alyssa, uh, Blind Faith quite a lot. So Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I see too, but at the same time, I don't know if I should recommend these people playing that. Yeah, so I haven't really done high keys on my Vengeance since Season 1, but I did. I mean, all of us kind of played it a lot in MDI, right? So we know how you can kind of get away with playing Blind Faith and the Feld of Legendary pretty much every key, right? You don't need Firebrand for anything. But I do think when you're pulling smaller, like 5 to 6 mobs, I think Firebrand is fine. Because like, you also, like Spirit Bomb got was really good because you, you were doing so big pulls that... It, it got nerfed this patch. Yeah, it got nerfed. Yeah, it's the only thing to get now. added to the target cap instead yeah, of taking off exactly. of it. Yeah. Like, that's actually a huge nerf. But, like, no one is pulling that big on high keys anyway. So, I feel like that's sort of the situation where Firebrand is super safe to play. And you're going to have a lot easier time, like, just staying in, tanking, rotating spikes and brands and stuff like that. Yeah. Whereas, it may still um, be, but it hit more than five yeah, targets, yeah. too. So, it's good. Yeah, I'm actually not sure why Rare's running Blind Faith, to be honest, because I feel like it has to be a lot less viability than running, like, he must have a lot of situations where he doesn't have anything. But I, I'm not really sure, cause since I haven't pushed Yeah, like I said, I haven't played either. Super high keys. That's fun, yeah. It does seem like it's really good, though, with the verse change. Like, I was messing yeah. around with a little bit. Yeah, it was marshy before. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I was, like, comfortably getting between 10 and 20% verse throughout the... Like duration of it and then like on top of like quick and sigils and mechanicals you have it up like really frequently now do, do you guys have this experience i have as a tank where even on like a tyrannical key when you're just fighting a boss it's by far the most relaxing time of the dungeon like everybody oh, yeah. else is uh is there especially like the, there's there's these mechanics on this fight right the arcane lightning that is so scary for everybody else and as a tank you're just like <laughs> dude actually i'm part of it it's like i, I don't know it's, like... my grip did <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like, like when I when I was playing in this key specifically, I, I was like, oh man, like, what the hell do I do? Because I feel like I'm so useless here, right? Like, I'm just like, I'm just like panning my camera. Look at this guy flying up. Like, I'm trying to help my team, but I, I don't really know what I can do to like really help, right? Because like all I'm doing is just hitting the boss and tanking. But I do think one of the things that like I tried to do in this key specifically, since I wanted to pull more weight, is by just like soaking as much of these lines. Like, you see this guy running away from me, but I'm trying to like take as many lines as possible because DK is yeah. really good at handling that and I feel like that's like one way of helping but even then like this is like a massive struggle where, where I realize in like four tyrannical keys when you're playing a tank it's easy for you and it's really relaxing but then like your group is struggling and it's like well I can't really do much for you guys I'm just hitting the boss unless you play a prop pod and then you can off you a little bit I don't know man I see AMZ off CD and I, it's never been never been pressed <laughs> I think I think it'll be pressed. It's gotta be pressed at some point. I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> some amogus going on here. Do 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 do. Oh, um, no, no, but uh, I think another example would probably be, or that I've like answered recently would be, uh, Brewmaster Monk, where most people run double keg, but there is like a option, especially like this patch, uh, where you can play Celestial Infusion with special delivery. And then you play Necrolord, and it's a lot better survivability. Um, and that's generally what I recommend to people who are like going into like kind of intermediately hard keys. Um, because I mean, Kyrian plus uh, Kick Smash Legendary is way more damage, but uh, it's definitely a lot less survivability, especially in some scenarios. And, and I think another problem is um, I feel like you pretty much always need to slow. In, in a in a group and if you're like pugging especially as a brewmaster like you might not have like a slow and so if you have it like yourself it's like really really nice uh to pug with yeah that's something i wanted to talk about at some point but uh i don't i don't, I don't know the clip exactly up right now i yeah, was yeah. talking about like how uh like the ways of kiting i think that's like a really important to knowing how to tank because i mean yeah. like as a tank what, what are the ways you can reduce damage there's just get, like brute forcing it by just like heal more right just, just like tell your healer to heal more or just like healing more yourself and then two is like you play your rotation or defensive that are that's like a somewhat of a skill cap and then like the last thing to reduce damage is just by avoiding damage right by just 
not standing and stuff and kiting and stuff. And I think a large part of that is you need a slow, which is yeah. why like Frost Mage is like yeah, super yeah. good at the moment. I think one thing a lot of tanks, uh, well, like maybe we like kind of do passively, but it's like the really open thing about slow is that you can like kite a little bit, but not that much. So like you're still tanking, but by like backpedaling just a little bit, you're like making them melee less. So you're getting melee less often. And there's like a huge damage reduction, just like moving a little bit all the time, even though it's like bad for like DPS play, but they don't really understand, right? You, want, you know, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, this is a perfect like, example right here. Yeah. Look at this. Oh my god. Taking zero <laughs> damage while building my resources. Wait, what is this timing? No, just how we do it up, yeah. Point. Took us yeah, 50 takes to get this. Like miles while we're with... <laughs> uh, huge slow. Getting hit in the back, yeah. yep. That's, is that, is this on the list? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, miles were in slow. I blame the mage. If we had one, but yeah, I, I think that's a great point. I think from what I've seen in like VOD reviews I've done of other tanks, they literally just stand there sometimes taking full melees. And I think what you said about like, just, I, I like to call it soft kiting. Cause it's not really hard kiting. It's not like the demon hunter kind of kiting where you just leap out and like run all over the place. Hey, you're just moving a little I bit. I think, yeah, yeah. Like I think, I think, I think Tettles actually called this once the blood decay kiting. Cause I mean, yeah, like, cause the 90% slow is from, fixed. uh, 90% slow from yeah, the, yeah. the grip as well as so, yeah. or the, the death and decay, right? Like that is, yeah. it's actually so OP for the first couple seconds of that thing. You're just never going to get hit. Unless How? you bug it out and get it from a... Uh, yeah, we're, we're, I remember that one where they would, they'd go out and back in and they'd stay 90% <laughs> slow the whole time. Dude, I think, I think it's, it still exists. Oh my God. That's amazing. How, how do you decide here in kind of a, a broader sense like so we're watching this dos run right how, how do you make the decision okay we're gonna go left first we're gonna go to Ardenweald, and then we're gonna come out and around and not go to mechagon right we're gonna go do this spirit is that is this just what you like is this just your dos plan or are there variables that okay now you're you we are actually going to mechagon we just we're, we're gonna do that mask first like how, how does all those decisions get made yeah so i think as a tank you have to make really quick decisions you can't just be that guy who's like sitting around and then the TPS is like, yo, can you pull it ready? And in this specific scenario, I saw that the mask was like in a really good patrol and I'm like, you know what? This is like probably like a great time for this pug to just do it. So I just went went ahead and pulled it. I didn't really think too hard about it. It was just like a quick snap decision. And I think that's also something that's like really valuable for tanks. Like how do you guys decide when to pull and when to like wait for mana or wait for first thing, you know, wait for Grievous? I think the biggest thing is your, uh, it's like you're, you're tracking the cooldowns with Omni CD, I guess, or whatever, on the left of the body frames. And I think it's important to track, um, like you don't want to clutter it with every possible spell from everyone's spell book, but you want to track the important stuff like Bone Dust Brew, you want to see Combustion, like major cooldowns, and then see what's ready, what's going to be ready, and like judge what you want to have for a pull, you know? Because like if Bone Dust Brew is ready, like you don't want to be fighting like one dude, right? You want to have Crane Sacks for the monk to pop off, right? Like. There, there's it can be really hard depending on the comp you're playing like what is a two minute cooldown that's that's like my terran pugs is like you play mist and you're playing with a hunter monk and you know anything else with a two minute and they all pop it at the same time and it dies in 15 seconds and then you have nothing for the next two minutes right what, what about like when to chain and when to continue to pull because like how, how do you guys know if like the healer is struggling or not to keep up you'll be dying if they're struggling <laughs> yeah if it's, it's a Holy Pala and I don't have wings or Holy Avenger or Ashen, then they're gonna be a buyer and do zero healing. So that's probably a, uh, <laughs> that's probably a, a place where you wouldn't you wouldn't change. Yeah, but there's also pulls so, where they don't require any healing, but it's like if the pull lasts forever, it'll be bad. You know, like that's like you you can pull without healing cooldowns. I think it's just something you have to judge, right? Like when. If DPS cooldowns are ready, well, here cities aren't ready, it's fine. But maybe the other way around too. Like if you don't have DPS cooldowns, but you have your cooldowns, you might be fine to do the pull. Obviously, it really depends on what pull you're doing, right? But it's you know that's why it's nice to drag yourself because mana as well. You know, if they're oom, it's, it's really bad to chain, right? Especially on stuff like spiteful, it can be uh, really annoying. <laughs> do you guys ever feel like medium pulls are more dangerous than the big pulls because you're? you know you, you have less cooldowns available for each pull right like if you if you're seeing like two packs you know and you fight them separately versus doing them all together and, and having the healer cooldowns and the damage cooldowns and the tank cooldowns oh yeah 
yeah i think the yep. prime example like the biggest example by far in this expansion is uh theater of pain if you're pugging theater of pain and you're doing the first pull and then you do boss afterwards it's like such a struggle because like no one wants to pop anything on the first pull right because you're about to do boss with like lust and all that stuff so when pugs are doing that you're just like getting demolished by the first pack or like your heal has to heal like crazy and it just makes it so much harder than just like maybe pulling the blood horn to the first pack straight away that's my experience at least yeah i definitely definitely feel that way as well like i i, I feel like the, because cooldowns are so powerful this expansion you just like what you want to do as much as you can with your cooldowns because they're they're gonna they're gonna work unless the key level is you know 29 30. let's talk a little bit about just in general the usage of of the defensive cooldowns right because when you when you look at each tank right they have these i don't know four or five buttons right we're watching this blood decay perspective you got vamp blood you got ice bond fortitude uh, you got a rune weapon you know how how are you how do you evaluate when is the correct time to use those buttons versus when you're going to want to save them for later i think i think on bosses it's a little bit less interesting because you can kind of just press them whenever you just you're hoping to come out of the boss fight with all of them available with the exception of a couple of scary bosses but you know how how do you make a decision about whether you're going to be in enough danger to justify pressing one of those buttons and if you're going to need it in the future like what what are the factors you're thinking about there um i mean it basically going to be based around i mean generally if you're plugging a key as a tank or you're doing any key as a tank you're going to have like a general plan of what you're doing next um so sort of route wise um and then i think that's probably one of the biggest skill of, uh, skills of a tank is you know understanding okay i have to save this cooldown for this pool you know that's coming like soon or coming next or whatever um an example of that would be i guess um you have like uh nazadar i guess after first boss where you know you don't really want to pop anything on the first like necromancer pool because you want to save everything for nazadar because that pull's gonna hurt a lot because there's gonna be so many kicks going through. Um, and I, I guess that's just generally the skill. You know, you have to understand okay, I can't use anything on this first pull. Um, otherwise, you know, I'm gonna really struggle. Um, I mean, I can give you an example that in, the, in our 30, I, I died on Gore Grind because I had, um, I still had my Guardian, but I knew if I popped Guardian on Gore Grind, I would die to rot speed because uh, we had to save uh, both my my guardian and my and SLT for rot speed. Otherwise, we were not going to kill rot speed, um, and that actually resulted in me dying. I think I died because explosive went through, but regardless, like I can pop extra CDs. Um, so I think that's just... about that. Do you, do you think that's like something? Do you think that's like the right call if like you're about to die, but you just can't use it no matter what because you need it for the next? In, in that scenario, yeah, because I knew that if I did pop. Uh, we were not gonna kill lots of you, and then the key would be. So, so you're saying like that, that was the right move, and yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think the yeah, actually... also... yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I, was gonna, I was gonna say real quick. That's just like something that I notice a lot because, like, you know, sometimes people are like, I, I know, especially Twitch chatters. Sometimes they'd be like, you know, why don't you pop in card here? Because you know, like, you, yeah. I, I happen to die, and then they're like, why don't you pop in card? And yeah. I'm like, man, these guys don't understand. People can't be pressing it card here, man. You need it. Yeah, you yeah. need it for this, like, incoming card. But yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, that's something that happens all the time. And it's so annoying. It's like, oh, yeah, why didn't you put this here? And it's like, well, if I pop it here, I'm going to die on the next pool. Um, I don't know. It, it, it's just generally, I guess, the biggest skill as a tank is understanding when you need to pop stuff, when you need to save stuff. And it's only going to really come from experience and understanding yeah. uh, the mobs and then and also the routes as well, you know. That's why I think the tank should probably be one of the most, uh, you know, come up with the most ideas about what you're pulling and why, because a lot of it is he's going to have to live it, you know. Right, and, and you need to understand, like, if you need IBF or whatever for the next pull, you know, Vamp Blood, yeah. right? Yeah, you, exactly. you need to know then that you, you can't press it on this previous pull. And, and I think also the converse is true as well, right? Like, if you, if you know you need Vamp Blood in a minute, right? Like press it yeah. now because you're not going to get to press it in 30 seconds, right? So you're, you know, just just send it. I think if people are new to uh, Bloody Kid, I think it's very nice to just play um, Red Thirst instead of uh, Bone Storm, because like 
I mean, Bone Storm is nice for threat, but like having the option to press Vamp on every single pull, it is it is so nice. Especially if you're playing Vamp here, because you're spending so much more, um, you're spending so much more RP right, and it gives you that little AOE damage instead of having Bone Storm on pull. So, so like, I don't know. I, I think it's super nice to play Red Thirst whenever you can get away with it, but it is understandable you have to play Bone Storm sometimes for the threat. It's, I have no uh, idea how Kiao plays Bone Storm and Hike. He's, he's literally a nutter. He's like Who a plays this? Uh, Kiao. The I, don't, I don't think he plays it anymore, yeah. but he was playing in it's, starting oh, out. Okay. It's one of those things where like, you you kind of do sometimes for the damage, or you want to be both in turn and get away with it, right? But Red Thirst is just so much easier and nicer to play, especially if you're yeah. new. It's, it's one of those things that if, if you're new to DK or Hikis in general, I, you should probably just play Red Thirst every game. Yeah, I would actually yeah, say... amazing. DKs in particular, I, I see a lot of beginner DKs choosing Purgatory on that row, and I always, I always say, "Oh yeah, that, look, man, you got to You got to just take Red, Red Thirst, right? Like it's yeah, that's yeah. like seven Purgatories." I mean, if you think about it, if you never die, you're basically missing a talent, right? I mean, I think cheat deaths are really strong. You know, the cheat death trinket you you've used to great effect. It's on cooldown right now in, the, in this run, right? Like the the last resort effect yeah, on, on, on Vengeance, really strong as well. But I don't know. Per Perg is just such a weak cheat death, and yeah, Red Thirst is just so yeah, good. Yeah. Like, Vengeance cheat death is on a row that where other, every other talent is like, it is very, very useless. Plus, you also get a meta from procking well, it. Right, yeah, so. yeah, it's actually a cool yeah, it's it's best like, cool you can even plan for cheat death. Yeah, whereas Perg is just like, oh, you, st <laughs> you still gotta heal me, dog. I think, like, Perg used to be good in Legion, because then you would also, uh, you lost a debuff when you died, which is no longer the case, right? You just. It's stuck on you for the entire duration, even if you die after. So yeah, that part was okay. Whereas the the cheat death doing it from from uh, Kalsa Mafia, it, like when you die, it goes away. So if you're doing a key that you know you have a lot of time left, and you proc the cheat death, you could die on purpose. Like you could jump off the bridge in DOS, and then get rest, and you'll have the you'll have it ready again, right? So something to keep in mind if you know you have a lot of time left. Do you guys have like a certain way you organize your cooldowns? Do you guys try to use like the short ones first, or do you just try to put the big one on cooldown? How do you guys approach using your defensive cooldowns? Well, as a pro paladin, I pretty much press all and defender almost on cooldown in high keys. Um, especially since it's, I, I get it back because of uh, CDR. Um, and then it's mostly about planning on four to five weeks. I usually play bubble time, so it's mostly about planning. You know where I need to bubble, or where I need to press Guardian, for the most part. Like, I, I usually use my Arden and my Trinket Aegis, like, as much as possible, pretty much. Uh, yeah. And then, really? I, I mean, I also play with a Shaman, so his cooldown is kind of on a long CD, so usually it's... I mean, it, I mean in a high keys, it's basically the most important thing is that you kind of have a plan of what you're going to do and then you basically if, if you know that you need to like stay in on a pool then you need to have stuff like rotated all the time and then when you don't have stuff that's when you need to be out of the pool or the pool needs to be dead like you need to soft kite as Lepan was talking about earlier or they should just use, utilize stops like ring stuns you know that sort of thing to help you you have a lot of cooldowns as a DK compared to most other tanks. Um, I think generally, like when you're going in, there's never going to be a pull that you do without a cooldown. Like you're just going to slam them on cooldown pretty much, especially on pull. I see, like, like it, one of the biggest mistakes is people just like going in and not pressing it until they really need it. You know, whereas you yeah, should probably just be pressing HP. it to get it on cooldown. And sometimes, like, cool. you're probably slamming a lot of cooldowns at the same time. Even like in, in halls when you're doing a shard pull, like. I'm gonna go in there with Vamp Blood, Rune Weapon, and you know AMS, just you know, everything at the same time. So yeah, don't be afraid to just slide. Would you say you first. generally use IBF like last, or would you like yeah. put it in there somewhere do. in between? It is also because IBF is because your well. longest cooldown, so I want to use you the last. Mm -hmm. It is also not that strong. It's a 30% wall, right? But it's like it's it's hard to like put value on like your covenant ability and stuff like that, you know, because like vamp gives you more healing, also more health, right? Like, I think that into account. Um, but one one very underrated thing that I think a lot of people are sleeping on is uh, like DKs have a Lichborn conduit, which is just like a thirteen percent wall when you use it, which is it can make a difference, you know. Like, 
Because Lichborn isn't really a spell that people have been used in the past. It was more for like your Aegis utility thing to get you out of fears and charms, right? But now it's like one of those buttons that I'm pressing whenever it's ready, you know? Combined with something else to allow me to save another cooldown. Because uh, DKs, in my opinion, is like you're very often going to have to press more than one cooldown to survive. But like Lichborn being one of them is actually really, really nice. Because it just allows you to save more stuff. Yeah, that's definitely uh, an issue of, um, yes, yeah, so what I was going to say is more so it's also about like knowing when to. <laughs> Wait, one. Nah, so the other thing is also knowing, you know, when to not up stuff, like when a pull is about to die. And so you, you kind of need to have a good understanding of your group's damage and also like the HP of the mobs as well, like knowing like how long it's going to die. So, I mean, that's something I got very good at playing my spec, which was knowing, okay, I cannot do another divine toll here i need to save it for going into the next pool and also you know i can't do another Arden here i need to save it going into the next pool or something like that um that's obviously something that's very hard to do when you're pugging because you don't really know like the damage of uh like your group and you don't know really how fast stuff is going to die um but it's something that you just kind of need to be aware of um because obviously like overusing stuff can also be very very bad as well i think that's a really good just kind of general rule of thumb though is like particularly like once a couple of mobs have died and you're at the end of a pull some tanks are explicitly resource based right like death knight is really good to make sure you're coming into the next pull with all of your stacks of bones up and a bunch of runic power and all your runes right so like trying yeah. to get to that state at the end of when you're fighting like two mobs right and you're just getting to target dummy them and also just making sure that that you're not pressing defensives towards the end of the pull unless you really need to and you you instead you know when you you kite instead at the end and yeah a couple exactly. mobs left like yeah like yeah. You, most of the time you, you usually finish a pull by like kiting it a bit because you don't really want to uh commit anything else to it yeah so it's not just defensive cooldowns do you i think the part about the resource is also really important like yeah. for dk you want your shield and your ring powers so like at the end of the pull i would always try to like hit one mob with a marrow and then leave and like same for paladin you want to like build to like five holy power at the end of the pull if you can for uh demon hunter you would try to not tank the pack so that you would have your spikes it's like try to preserve two two stacks of your spikes and same for like you know even brewmaster if you can keep your purified cheese it, sticks yeah, 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 yeah. going yeah. into the next pull that's like super huge but yeah and that's, that's something that a lot of people don't thing. do yeah i mean and it's just, it, it generally just comes under planning you know General. Or just play a warrior, you know? Yeah. Just a warrior with the, uh, I mean, you still, you want to make sure you're not, you don't press your shield block when there's one mob left, right? But other than that, yeah, it's, yeah. uh, it's pretty free. Warrior yeah. tank is pretty chill. It's like, you just play with prize soul, you just go in there and you just always have block, I feel like. Well, yeah, there's, I don't know. There's not too much thought into it, I think. It's like chill, nice, beginner friendly tank, I think. Yeah, I oh, actually. You guys know? I think all all six huh? tanks can be good ones for beginners. What were you saying there, Darkita? Yeah, so for Pro Warrior, if you have nothing up, you're as tanky as a bear with one stack of fur. I don't think I don't think anyone like has actually looked into that, but their armor is actually really beefy outside of. It's because of all the like, the buffs to the strength passive. Yeah, uh, yeah. Vanguard. Like it's kind of gone into overdrive. It's like a really good uh, what you call it. I I guess. Yeah, I don't know. They for some reason make primaries that like super strong on probably going into this expansion, and they kept like buffing it. But I mean, uh, I think the biggest skill was like prop warriors probably not over using ignore pain. Like I see a lot of people because I've like reviewed pods in the past with prop warrior. I played it a lot last season um, in, in high keys, and I'd say that's like the most important thing is to not like overuse ignore pain to like always keep it up. Maybe maybe use a big pre ignore pain before like a big hitting tank mechanic but for the most part you want to pull your rage a lot of the times in like high keys um and then the other yeah. thing is not over spamming uh, revenge as well it's one of those specs where i think it's really important to get a, a tracker for the shield because ignore pain has a there's a cap of like two ignore pain casts in terms of how big the shield can get so like if you were spamming yeah. that you would never get past two times ignore pain shield value right 
Uh, in BFA, it used to be like 1.3 or something, but they actually increased it in, uh, in Shadowlands, so you can now press ignore pain twice, two times in a row, and you'll still have the value from it, assuming you absorb the incoming damage after, right? Uh, but yeah, it's definitely important to uh, make sure you're not overcapping on that and rather pull it. Yeah, I, th I think understanding the the power, like where the power comes in, in each of the specs is really important too, right? Like the with Warriors, right, it's shield block is just so good, right? And if so, if you're ever using something else when you could be using a shield block, right, and you, you have your shield blocks off cooldown, right, you have two charges of that, you know, that's a, a huge catastrophe because you're just, you know, that's it's a, just your best defensive and on a tiny cooldown. Um I, th I think there's some similar cases as well for other tanks, right? Where it's just like, you know, you, you need to make sure that you are maintaining as high possible of an uptime of these various effects or having the heavy damage always hitting into these uh, different effects, right? The, there was something I wanted to talk about, like, earlier, um, which was, I also think it's super important as a tank to be able to say when a pull is too hard or there's, like, an easier way to do something. Um... So, for example, like in my group in Necrotic Wake, we used to do the two Marauders after Nazadar immediately with uh, the Necromancer where the orbs are. But uh, as Propellant, like, well, first of all, the two Marauders are kind of like RNG in terms of when they cast the cleave on you. And that cleave does so much damage on, on like high fortified. Um, and we kind of had like a lot of problems where because we don't get orbs insta, the pull in general just, I, I can't commit all my CDs there because I, I've already used a lot of them on Nazadar and then I need to save some for the pull after because that pull is also hard. Um, so like a simple change we did was to always invis pot or belt through in order to get orbs first and then chain them just to make it easier for myself. Um, and like we found that just to be way more consistent than how we did it before. So, um, yeah. To me, that's yeah, like think... one of the most interesting things, though, is because you know you, you do like a hundred things in each of those dungeons that the first time you try it, right, it, it must seem impossible, right? And you're just like you're getting farmed by these uh, these really scary pulls, and and you know a lot of them you end up actually figuring out how to how to make them work. How, how can you tell the difference between a pull that's like doomed versus a pull that? you can get it right, right? You you know you can get it right, and you just have to try it again. You have to, you know, solve it, right? Fix it. Um, I mean, I, I think that comes from understanding, like, when, when you can die. Um, so for Prop Paladin, if there's any pull where you are kind of hesitant to commit Arlen Defender to, then that's a very scary pull. Um, and I think in like kind of understanding your spec because i mean there's other specs that are like that as well um like for example like a druid who he know he has like a hard pull where he can't pop the ink on and he needs to save it for the next one um so that's usually when you need to like scale something back or just make it much simpler and easier to do uh, like lots of times you generally overcomplicate stuff in, in high keys it happens like all the time um i, I think most of it in terms of deciding when to scale it back, just comes from experience, uh, like understanding, you know, do you need to do this for time? You know, how much of a time gain is it? You know, uh, etc. I mean, for example, Necrotic Wake is like pretty much always fine on timer that key. Uh, it's literally just play safe, big IO uh, sort of key. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's definitely like a case by case thing for sure. Yeah, for pools with with some RNG elements like the pull with the two Marauders and when they can cast their, how their uh, spell queuing goes, like you definitely want to minimize the room for errors. Like so, how they get the orbs and chain them in um, is really good because they'll, they'll, they'll die because DPS are probably not committing cooldowns and then on a high fort key, you probably won't break both shields at the same time, especially if they cast at the same time. So having the orbs there is really good. So, I mean, it really depends on the pool, but you want to minimize, like, room for mistakes. Like, if you don't get the orbs on them and you pull them in the beginning and then they cast the chain or the, their shields at the same time, then you'll probably be left with one alive for sure. Cool, all right. So we reached the end of the uh, the DOS run. 
Dorky, did you have any any like clips? Uh, I, know, I know you you said you might have earlier that you wanted to to pull up as well to to talk about any like concepts specifically, or uh, do you want to just keep uh, keep watching some vods? So there's this path theorist we recommend for the uh, average player, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Dude, left we were gonna bring out this run here. It was a sub 13 run, except it ended up being like a 20 something minute run. It was great Dude, though. This, this dungeon was absolutely cursed. Which dungeon do you guys saw was the hardest in uh, in MDI from a tank perspective? Uh, that's a good question. I I can't remember. It was like one dungeon I, I hated. Oh, this what is a spicy say? pull. <laughs> For me, it was Plagueful. I hated that place so much. Oh, really? I didn't mind Plagueful so much. All right, so yeah, you guys see this, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think this was one of the examples of soft cutting I was talking about. It's like this pull was pretty challenging, actually, to think, uh, especially when you're doing like the roof and like raging and all that stuff. And one of the ways we dealt with this pull is just by like I'm, I'm only trying to tank the roof for the most part like we're abusing the hell out of frost mage slow and i'm like for the most part not getting hit by these mobs just mostly the roof and this was like super important too because like i needed to try to save some stuff for the massive pull up ahead and yeah i mean this this movement is pull. is really uh it, it i think it just goes to show as well how much the tanking job right it's not just the tank right it's like the the dps player whoever has the slow right landing that slow is so important too yeah like i think this is another aspect of tank skill that's like super important like here's another example where i'm trying to just slowly backpedal away and to avoid the ground keeper damage because the ground keepers ground keepers actually hit for a lot especially only a lot 22 fortified yeah and it's also really important that you're not requiring healing because your team's requiring healing with like Grievous and uh, the fire guy being out. I think while doing this, it's also important to uh, try and move towards where you want to go next, right? Like if we're doing there, you want to get to the boss after, right? So you're moving in that direction. This makes sense. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't do actually in pugs is that they don't really move towards uh, the next area. They like mostly try and stand still. I think moving quick in general is a really big thing. Like oh, a, yeah. a lot of tanks, I, especially when I play DPS, because I play a lot of DPS back in BFA. I was like mostly playing DPS. One of the things that like was somewhat annoying as a DPS player is when the tank is just going so slow and just like not pulling, or sometimes they're going too aggressive and just doing like, random stuff. But that's like the lesser end of it. Yeah, I try and always like have it as a thing to be the first person, you know. Like, if I'm the last person, I did something wrong. Unless there was nothing I could do, right? But... Right, yeah. I'm I'm just just yeah. yeah. <laughs> True. You need to get the head start. I think, though, the, you know, figuring out, like, hey, which direction do I want to kite in? You know, some sometimes you don't really have an option, right? Some, sometimes it's just things are going so bad, you're just trying to live. But, you know, if it's a controlled situation, right, and you want to try and get everything under control if you can... Then you're you're thinking about okay where where do I actually want to be after this pull is over and make sure you're walking in that direction. Yeah, this uh dude, this is a scary pull. This this is the the fortified or no the tyrannical necrotic spiteful sanguine depths. Yeah, it was from the uh, the MDI. Yeah, that is horrifying. You guys you uh, had enough of that pull. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what happened here. There we go again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was one of those pulls where, you know, you just, you get them in there. We would, you, you would pop trees at the end uh, when they're low. And then we just drop a slow, the enemy will run away. And then despite fulls, they extend your, your lantern stacks. Spite is actually so, really good in this dungeon, I, I feel. It's, yeah. It's yeah. yeah. And explosive. Yo, as, a, as a tank, would you guys say yeah. the bigger issue has been fret having a kite or doing damage right i guess that's, that's part of kiting it's like I, I know i know i've heard a lot of complaints from tanks across like twitter and reddit and stuff what would you guys say is like the biggest issue with tanking at the moment i think fret. yeah 
And I think it's threat. I think I think they're both an issue with the record, but I think threat is a bigger issue. Like it's it feels really bad when you know like you played your class correctly, like you didn't do anything wrong, but there's still mobs that just aren't on you, you know? Like that you there's nothing you could have done to like make sure those mobs are hitting you. Like that feels really bad, you know? And that that yeah, goes with yeah. being damaged, right? So like a lot of things like blood DK, the threat sucks because their damage sucks. Yeah. Now I and personally don't care better. if uh like in a perfect world, whether they buff the threat modifier or our damage, you know, like I I don't care. It's just like the most important thing is just having aggro. Like I do think there should be like if you're buffing threat or damage or whatever, then you, people might see say it's gonna be like Legion where you would just go into a pull, do your initial threat for like five seconds. And then kite for the rest of the pool, right? Um, because like I do think an issue like if you're just kiting the entire pool and you still have a threat, it's kind of a bad thing. But at the same time, if you don't have the option to tank the pool the entire time, and sometimes even when you are tanking the pool and you're losing the aggro, you know, th there is a problem, you know. Yeah, like if you if you go into a pool and you dump five damage globals in melee range on a target. You shouldn't be losing threat to that thing, I agree. And right now you can. It, it requires you to be in, you know, a group with somebody who's doing a lot of damage, right? But like ideally, you want to be in those groups. Those groups are sweet. Those are those are the best groups. I mean there there is a fine balance that they need to get. But threat yeah, I would agree threat's a problem. Definitely. Uh do any of you have any any topics or uh, words of wisdom that we haven't yet gotten to on tanks before we close this thing out. How about one piece of advice for uh, aspiring tanks? If you if you could if you could give one piece of advice, maybe maybe to your younger self, what would what would you tell yourself tanking? Uh, uh roll DPS. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I'm think a lot be... of people roll tank right because they they like tanking. It's it's yeah, nice because you're high, you're in high demand if you're good, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I feel like also in control. I think that's the big thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like you have you have the biggest impact on the entire group as a tank, I feel like, in dungeons. And even in Raid 2, like in Raid, there's 14 DPS, but there's two tanks, right? So like, if you're doing your job well, you feel like you're actually making a difference, you know? Whereas if you're one out of 14 DPS and you're doing really good, you, you don't feel like you're doing as much, uh, you know, in the overall sense of everything going on, you know what I mean? Like, you can put a lot on yourself to make sure stuff goes well, I feel like. Maybe it's not for everyone, but it's like, if you want that option to, uh, you know, have that ability to carry more than any other role, I think I think tank, tanking is good. Yeah, so my biggest advice is, I think it's really important for tanks to have confidence. Like, you can't be wish-washy about if you want to pull or not, or, you know, you should be to live this or not. I, I, think, I think a lot of tanks just have to experience it. Like, it's one thing to just read guides and watch videos and stuff, but I think it's, like, a complete another thing to just experience it. And just get in there and just try doing some pulls and maybe playing more aggressive and see how that goes. And if it doesn't work out, you can always dial it back. Yeah, it's tough, right? Because, like, you, you know, if, if something goes wrong on the tanking end, right? Like, if you do a bad pull, if you die... Yeah, it's, it's usually like white, right? It's yeah. like uh, so. The, there's that extra pressure on on the tank player, but on the other hand, you know, if if you half commit to a pull, it's just never going to work out, right? Like if you if you sort of are inching towards pulling two packs together, and then you decide against it, and like everybody in the group is confused about what's going on, you know, and one person's popped their cooldowns, and two people are holding them, that's it's just the worst of all worlds. So it's definitely like you got to commit. On that note. Thanks so much for joining me, everybody. This has been an illuminating conversation. Much appreciated. Of course, our guests have been uh, Andy Brew, LaPan, who you can find, and we'll probably put links below the description and stuff if we remember to. Uh, and of course, Nerf and Dorky, our, our resident tanking scientists. Thanks so much for, for talking with me. And uh, we'll see you guys all in the next one. Yo, wait. Okay. Buff Blood DK, last message. Buff okay. Blood DK, Bye. yeah. Buff Blood DK. Yes, please. <laughs> Awful <laughs> so true. All right. <laughs>